The Bible is the inspired Word of God. Friends, it is the only book that reveals to us the enemy of holiness. Let us study the Bible, for if we do so, we shall find rest for our souls. Please turn to your Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 1, verses 14 to 16. Genesis chapter 1, verses 14 to 16. Because of time straight, I will be putting the text on the screen. Our topic today is a place in the sun. What is our topic? A place in the sun. The Bible says, let's read it together. 3 3. And God said, let there be light in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. And let there be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let there be for the lights of the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. Let's bow our heads. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Amen. Father, as we are about to indulge into your word, Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit to comfort us. Amen. Lord, please remove me and appear in my heart, Lord, as I present your message. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful Sabbath day. In your name we pray. You know, friends, when you look at this verse, we want to identify something that God is trying to tell us about the creation of light, which is the sun. Now, to divide the day from the night, what is that? And what is God trying to inform us about this specific <coughs> creation? What is God trying to inform us? That is a question, so I expect an answer. What is He trying to inform us? You know, friends, you know, in His handiwork, God made the sun, the moon, and the stars to divide the day from the night, according to the Bible. Am I right? Which means that God had a purpose. God had a purpose for these three specific creation. Amen? You know, the purpose why God made the sun, moon, and the stars was to give light to the earth. You know, we all know that the sun, the moon, and stars are located in the heavens in a total different galaxy. Thousands of miles away from Earth. Do you all agree with that? But friends, we must remember that according to the Bible, it springs light unto the Earth. It springs light unto the Earth. You know, according to the Bible, God's purpose for His creation is for the sun, moon, and stars was to give light to the Earth. And one of the purpose, let me say this, one of the purpose to serve the need for the earth was to what? It's not the purpose for itself, but it's for something else. But one of the purpose for it is to give light. You know, if there was no sunlight, there would be no life. Do we agree with that? There would be no vegetation out there. You know, the Bible does not say, let there be light for me to look good. It doesn't say that. You know, friends, the sun's given purpose was to serve the earth. Let me be more specific with us. You know, <clears throat> everything which God created has a purpose to serve something else rather than itself. You know, however, we have a worldly and a godly view. You know, sadly, this mentality is foreign to our world. 
Because human exists for themselves. Pause on that. However, with God's system, everything exists for something else. You know, according to the Bible, God gives a description of how we are to be everything, sorry, how we, we are to be to everything we come in contact with. And in the book of Mark chapter 10, let's look at it. Please write it down. But Jesus said, let's read it together. But whosoever will be great among you shall be what? Minister. And whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be a servant of all. For even the Son of Man, what did he say? For even the Son of Man came not to what? Minister unto, but to minister. And to give his life as a ransom for many. Now listen to what the Spirit of Prophecy says. And I want us to read this prayerfully. She says, There is nothing save the selfish heart of man that lives unto itself. No birds that cleaves the air. No animals that moves upon the ground but ministers to some other life. There is no leaf of the forest or lowly blade of grass but has its ministry. Every tree, listen to this, every tree and every shrub and leaf pours forth their element but has its ministry. Sorry, elements of life without which neither man nor animals could live. And man and animals, in turn, minister to the life of the tree, shrubs, and leaf. Let's move on. Let's read it together. Two, three. The flowers breathe fragrance and unfolds their beauty in blessings to the world. The sun shares its light to gladden a thousand worlds. The ocean itself, the source of all our streams and fountains, receives the streams from every land, but takes to give. The mist ascending from its bosom falls in showers to water the earth, but that it may bring forth and by. You know, friends, the essence of this statement is everything exists for the purpose of something else and not itself. You know, that is the way heaven functions. You know, let me give you some practical examples. I like practical examples. What do you see up there? Medical doctors and nurses, all right? Now, as a doctor or nurse, you must study medicine or get a diploma or degree for somebody else's benefit. Am I right? And it praise God that we are teachers here as well and teachers to be. You know, as a teacher, you go to study at university four years. Am I right, Lassa? Four years? Bachelor of your degree to teach for the benefit of something, somebody else. You know, if, there was no if there was no teacher, we would not be educated. Am I right? Yeah? Friends, the purpose of becoming the best doctor and the best nurse or the best teacher is to benefit others and not yourself. You know, friends, let me say this. As believing Christians, we must remember that we are saved to serve. Am I right? Amen. We are saved to serve and not and not serve. We are saved to serve and not serve. You know, sadly, let me say this. The carnal mind exists for itself. Because when we have this carnal mentality, we feel that if I exist, for somebody else, it amounts to nothing because I do not get anything out of it. Are we following? Are we following? 
However, as believing and faithful followers of God, we must strive with the help of the Holy Spirit to remove this state of mindset within and without. Because that will become a stumbling block for our spiritual journey to heaven. Sit on that and think about this. You know, friends, let me say this. We must remember that when we remove self, we are then functioning like God, which is to serve others and not ourselves. You know, we must remember that every living being, including animals, plants, who are created by God, has a place in the sun. That they may cast light upon the earth, which is full of darkness and full of sin. You know, listen to what the book of Jeremiah says. In Jeremiah chapter 1, 4 to 5, let's read it together. 2, 3. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee as a prophet unto the nations. You know, in other words, let me say this. Before Jeremiah was born and conceived, God had a purpose for his life. And that purpose for Jeremiah was to preach, preach to the lost nation of Jerusalem, of the Israel, the nation of Israel. You know, friends, as I said, God has a purpose for every life that exists in this earth. You know, we must also remember, though, that God created everything differently. Everything. You know, when God created the earth and all that was in there, He created everything differently. None were alike. Kids, do me a favor. Put up your thumb or your, your palm. Look at each other's palm. Can you see that you have the same veins on your palm? Is it the same? It's different, isn't it? And think about this. You know, it feels like snow lately, hey? It's all cold. You know, let me say this. No two snowflakes are alike. Every snowflake has how many sides? Scientists here? Yeah. Six. Am I correct? Yes. Six sides. But no two are the same. Bear with me. No two cells in the human body are alike. No two leaves are alike. If you go outside, kids, after this, I want you to go look at the leaves out there and tell Uncle Sonny if it's the same. They're all different. Okay, they're different. No two human beings are alike. You turn to each other, do you look the same? Turn to each other. <laughs> no two human beings have the same fingerprints. Are we following? Now listen to what the Spirit of Prophecy says. Let's read it together. Two, three. To each human being, God has assigned an individuality and a distinct work. Those who believe in the Lord are not to live to please themselves. Pray for me, ponder on that. The soul of every sinner is precious in the sight of God and demands the care of those whose names are on the church. Well, friends, this is a powerful counsel. You know, according to this counsel, especially to those who are baptized in the Christian faith are in or in the book of the church. God has given us individuals a designated duty to serve others and not ourselves. You know, friends, as believing Christians, we are called to care 
and to reach lost souls and to bring them to Jesus. Because the soul of every sinner is precious in the sight of God. You know, to each human being, God has a sign. God has designed us differently. You know, that is why, let me say this to parents, we should never tell our sons and our daughters, why can't you be like your older brother or like your, your older sister? Think about it. Because God created us differently. And we cannot be the same kind. You know, an example of this is God picks 12 disciples 12 apostles, but he calls them to be different preachers and not the same. Listen to what the Spirit of Prophecy says. A distinct work is assigned to every Christian. Now then my question is to myself today is, Lord, what is my worth? Lord, why am I I hear. Lord, where is my place under the sun? And that question, we're going to look at it deeper. You know, friends, until we find that, the, the whys and, 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 and what and where God has specific purpose for your life, then your life is not as fulfilling as God has desired it to be. I know that sounds harsh. You know, the tragedy is this, that most people go through life never finding the desired purpose that God wants them to accomplish in their place under the sun. Yes, we all have our careers. We all have our money. We all, we all have our houses, etc. However, we never find God's specific purpose for our lives. Now the second question I want us to ponder or think of is this. How can I find the specific purpose for my life? Now, there are some general principles in pursuing this specific purpose God has for you and I. And we shall go to the Bible. If you turn your Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 32. We all know this text very well. What does the Bible say? Let's read 2-3. Therefore, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, including your purpose under the sun, do all to the what? Do all to the glory. Of God. Now, think about this. You don't know what purpose God has for you. But according to the Bible, what desire have you got in mind? What desire? Look at the Bible. What does the Bible say? All for the glory of God is what you are driven by and you don't know the purpose yet. You know, you know, sometimes, you know, friends, let me say this, sometimes God does not reveal it because we are not ready. You know, friends, let me say this, the willingness of mine is this, whatever I do, I'm thinking and doing what I do for God's glory. And whatever I do, I must desire to please God and not myself. I must desire to please God and not myself. You know, friends, let me say this. God's purpose in our lives will affect our decisions, okay? God's purpose in our lives 
will affect the decisions we make under the sun. We must also remember the following, that when God is in control of our decisions and purposes in life, it will be to glorify Him and not ourselves as the world teaches. You know, friends, God's purpose for our lives must be a living principle. That we must strive to have and perform. But remember that we cannot do this by ourselves, but only through Christ, who is our rock and our foundation of our faith. You know, here are some examples that I'd like to put up. Dress code. You know, how we dress and portray ourselves in society must be in line with the purpose of Christ under the sun. Dress code. This is just an example. Healthy lifestyle. How we look after our bodies must be in accordance to his health principles for the purpose of good health for us under the sun to be a witness of God. Behavior. God's purpose. You know, how we behave in society must be in accordance to the principles of His Word for the purpose of leading lost souls to God under the sun. You know, friends, let me say this. We must strive to be walking, we, we must strive to be a walking sermon because our faith to us is to us. Faith is to us a living reality. Faith is to us a living reality. You know, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians, therefore, whether what? You eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. You know, I would like to take you to the Council of the Spirit of Prophecy. We're going to study it. Right? And listen to what the message of God reminds us. Reminds us this morning. She says, let's read together. We need to follow more closely God's plan to life. To do our best in the work that lies nearest. To commit our ways to God. And to watch indication of His providences. These are rules that ensure safe guidance in the choice of of an occupation. Next, he who comes from heaven to be our example spent nearly 30 years of his life in common mechanical labor, but during this time he was studying the word and the works of God and helping teaching all whom he influenced. When his public ministry began, he went out kneeling the sick, comforting the sorrowful, and preaching the gospel to the poor. This is the word of all his followers. You know, friends, what the spirit of prophecy is saying about Jesus is that he had a plan for our lives. And God's plans are detailed. I want to explain that to us. God's plans are detailed. You know, give me some details or information regarding the plan of salvation. The first question is, who was to come to die for our sins? Jesus, am I right? Jesus, this is the part of the plan. When did he come? He came in the what? The fullness of, of time he came. 
In what tribe would he come? In the tribe of what? Judah. Am I right? In what city would he be born? Yes? And where would he run for safety when he was going to be persecuted? Egypt. And who was his mother? We all know this. It's Mary. You know, friends, let me say this. Let me say this. All these specific details, he also has, sorry, all these specific details were for the plan of salvation. Alright? It was for the plan of salvation. It's a detailed plan. Now, if God is a God of details, He also has a similar detailed plan plans for our lives. Because the Bible says it, and I love this text, Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Can someone repeat that? For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a future can I hear an amen to that? You know, God also has a specific plan for the children of Israel. Follow me. We're going on a journey here. You know, Israelites, when they were in Egypt, was to deliver them, right? The reason why God brought them out from Egypt was to deliver them from breaking the Sabbath. Did you know that? Yeah? And he was to free them, alright? He was to free them from the curse of slavery to enter the land that was filled with milk and honey. Friends, you know, let me say this. God also has a specific detailed plan for us, which is to enter the heavenly kingdom with our Lord and Savior forever. I can't wait. I'm sick of this world. Who is sick of this world? Hands up. Amen. Amen. I want to go home. Amen. You know, beloved, as God gave the Israelites specific instructions and boundaries to obey, so does He for us today. You know, we as believing Christians are given specific details and guidelines from the Bible that we must obey to reach our destiny, which we know is eternity, with our Lord and our Savior. You know, God has, a, God has a specific detailed plan for your life and my life personally. However, we need to follow more closely God's plan of life under the sun. Listen to what the Spirit of Prophecy says. I've quoted this already. She said, we need to follow more closely God's plan of life. To do our best in the work that lies near us, to commit our ways to God, and to watch for the indication of His providences. Now my question is, I want to ask you, what does it mean to do our best in the work that lies nearest to us. What does it mean to you and to me? You know, my answer is this. Whatever you are doing now, while you are searching for your purpose, you must do it to the best of your ability. Because God is watching you. So when He reveals His specific plan for you, He will guide you to His plan for your life on this earth. Think about it, guys. Family. You are here for a purpose. Whatever things you do, and I'm speaking to the young people here, you know, praise God for your singing ministry. Search your heart and ask God to help you. You know, because uh, as the Spirit of Prophet says, God is watching you. You know, it reminds me of the story of Eli's son. They were very careless. 
They were very careless in their ministry for God. And as we know what happened, they were struck down. You know, we are so great, we're so, we're so blessed that we have a merciful and loving God. You know, friends, with God's guidance, we must strive, let me say this, we must strive to do our best in the work that lies nearest to us. You know, parents, whatever you do, you work. At work, for example, do it to your best. Amen. Don't do it halfway. Like Mana, I always tell him, Mana, do your bed, but he does it halfway. Yeah? My friends, God is telling us, do your best. Amen. When you come, when you're on duty, do your best. Don't complain. Do your best. Amen. What about this next part? To commit our ways to God. Think about it. To commit our ways to God. You know, when I was reading this, and this came up, and it says, we are to address Him about everything. We are to address Him about everything. When we are in partnership with God, every aspect of our life will be brought first to God. Every aspect. This includes your bills, your everything. You know, um, and I praise God for Pastor, uh, an American gentleman, Eric Walsh. He said something that really got me about your bills. Have you ever thought of praying over your bills? I did that. And friends, let me tell you, my personal experience, God just lifted it off me. You know, we all have bills. Put it in front of it and pray over it. And see what God will do. You know, every decision we make must be brought to God first. Because He is our source of life under the sun. Which is the way, the truth, and the life. John 14 verse 6, we know all this text. What did Jesus say? I am the what? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one what? Come to the Father. You know, Jesus is the source of life. So that is why we are called to commit our ways to God. So that we may live an abundant life through Him. My final question to watch for the indication of His providence. <clears throat> Bear with me. You know, in other words, we must look for opportunities of signs that God is leading you. God is moving through you to be a witness for souls that need Him. We must watch for the indication of His providence. So my question is this. Now what is, what is that that gives us the eyes to recognize the providences of God? What is it? What is it, friends? Holy Spirit, what else? Thank you. The Bible. You know, if we don't study the Bible, God will walk by you and you will not recognize Him. I'll give you an example. I'm full of examples today, am I? Amen. Now, when Jesus was on earth, right? Think about this. He was sitting in the midst of His disciples and He told them that He will suffer many things and be crucified and risen in how many days? Three days. And you can find this in the book of Mark chapter 8, 31 to 38, and Mark chapter 10, verses 33 to 34. However, when they saw him after his resurrection, they were terrified and thought that Jesus was a spirit. This is what the word says. This is what it says. 
But they were terrified and frightened and supposed they had seen a what? His spirit. We're not going to read the whole thing. Now, the Bible says Jesus himself stood in the midst of them. However, the disciples said that they saw a spirit. Why was that? You know why, friends? Because their eyes were not conditioned by the Word of God. Their eyes were not conditioned by the Word of God. So when Ellen White says to watch for the indication of his providence, you know what she's saying is, if the disciples had believed that he said that he will rise again, their eyes would be conditioned by the Word of God. And they would have recognized it immediately. My question for us is this. What about our condition with the Word of God? You know, as believing Christians, let me say this. Our lives must be conditioned by the Word of God. You know, friends, if our eyes are, are conditioned by the words of God, just imagine, just imagine, friends, the reality of our lives today. And I have to say this. You know, the gossiping will stop. other people will end. Forgiving will be a norm. You know, I praise God for today's lesson. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is a norm. I want to share about forgiveness. And this is a personal testimony that happened to me a few Sabbaths ago. You know, there's a lady that, and I share with Uncle Tim, there's a lady that stayed with us, lovely, beautiful lady, I love her. She came and looked after our kids. But one Sabbath, she was cleaning up and working on Sabbath, and here I am, I was fuming within me. I was so angry, and it kept burning inside of my heart. And then something told me, and I read this text, and the Spirit says, go and apologize to her. But I said, oh no, I don't want to break our relationship. Friends, I went and apologized, so we sat down and I, and, I, and, I, and I told her. And she cried. She boiled her eyes, and she did not speak to me for the whole day. I sent her a text. And guess what? The next day, we made our peace. You know, sometimes, Amen. you know, sometimes we think that we can't do it on ourselves. You know, sometimes we think, oh, it's too hard. But you know, when God says what He says, He He will follow through for you. He always does. And now this lady respects respects my faith. You know, as I said, just imagine the reality of our church will be today. Forgiving will be normal. No hatred. There will be love for each other within the church. Not thinking that you are higher than someone else. Because friends, we are all sinners, aren't we? The only person that is higher is God. Hallelujah. Your love for God and love for others will be a norm. Amen. Will increase. And love for self will decrease. Amen. You know, this can happen but only if our hearts and our minds are conditioned by the Word of God. 
Are we following? You know, think about your condition with God's Word today. Are you living in accordance to the light of the Word of God or the light of the world? Because, you know, we know this text. In, in, in Psalms chapter 119, what does it say? Thy word is a what? Then unto my feet and a light unto my path. Friends, let me say this. The Bible is the only book that qualifies us to recognize the leading and the moving and the providences of God for our lives. You know, sadly, let me say this. There are many sleeping Christians today in the church, which is called lukewarmness. You know, they don't bother watching for the indication of the devil who is attacking within their homes and within their lives. You know, when God gives them the warning from the Bible and the spirit of prophecy, they just ignore the counsel and let Christ's work walk right past them and invite the devil into their homes and their lives. It's like a buffet. You know, have you ever been to a buffet? I love buffets. You pick and choose. Eh? Oh, no, this is not... Uh, I don't want that. It's okay, no. Oh, I don't know. about that. No, I just want the healthy one. Eh? We become buffet Christians. Sit on that. You know, we must remember that Jesus also has given us a warning from his word, which he says, all scripture is given for what? Inspiration of God. Inspiration of God. And for profitable for what? Doctrine. For reproof. For correction. For instructions in righteousness. Friends, the three things that the spirit of prophecy says to us is to do our best in the work that lies near us. To commit our ways to God and to watch for the indication of His providence. Now let me ask you a question. Someone who is watching, because we have a lot of security guards here that stay up all night, eh? A watchman. Is a watchman a sleepy watchman or is he he's a... Yeah? Think about it. You know, God has told us this. He says, Watch and pray that ye enter not into what? Temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is, is weak. First Peter 5 verse 6 says, Be sober and be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is what? Is a rolling lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. You know, Jesus said to his disciples to watch and to pray for strength against temptation. Paul also reminds us from the Bible to be sober and be vigilant because the devil is your enemy. The devil is your enemy. Do we love our enemies? The devil? We're supposed to love the child, yes. But do we love the devil? Stay with me. Because, you know, the devil knows that he's going around destroying our spiritual lives with each other. And our spiritual love that we should be showing to our brothers and sisters who come to church. You know, friends, as I said, God wants us all to watch, pray, be sober, and vigilant for strength against temptation and the attacks that the devil has already planned for us. Did you know that? He already knows. He puts that in front of you for a reason, and he knows that he will get you. But my question to you is this. Are you watching and are you praying? A topic, a place in the sun. You know, let me say this. 
that there is also something that we must remember, and that is the work that God calls us to do, no one else can do it. Because no one else is you. Let me be more specific. Every human being on earth is unique because that is how God made us. We cannot do the same work similarly to others because no one else is you under the sun. We are all made differently according to God's design. You know, when Stephen died, Paul did not do Stephen's work. Paul did his own work. You know, friends, we must remember that no one can do the work of God, what God has called you to do, because God is not engaged in cloning. You know, God is a God, know this, of individuality and uniqueness. God has a plan for you in the Son for your life. You know, friends, He has a purpose. Ask Him to assist you in discovering that purpose. You know, we must also remember, we must always remember this, that when we follow God's path and purposes for our lives, there will be showers of blessing awaiting us. For us, not now, but at the end, we must remember that. At the end of the race on this earth, which is eternity with our Lord and our Savior. You know, sadly, there are those who choose the path away from God. However, listen very carefully. However, we must remember that God never gives up on you. You know, He always gives us a second chance. Just like He did to Samson. Just like He did to David. Just like He did to Solomon. Just like He did to Peter. And just like He did to many of us here today. You know, the Bible promises us. Let's read it together. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. You know, friends, when God says he will never leave you, nor forsake you, he's saying the following. There is no limit to the power of God. No matter where you come from, no matter how bad you have been, no matter what scenes you're struggling with, God has the love and the power to exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. But note that we must take the first step of faith in obedience to God's word who is our rock and the shelter in the times of storm. You know, we must also remember that to live a life different to the one God gave you is to live a fraudulent life. <coughs> Alright? A fraudulent life. You know, friends, we cannot live a double life with God. Amen. Because with God, there is only one. And that is a life of holiness and righteousness under the sun. You know, friends, let me say this, and I'll be closing soon. We are all special and unique to God under the sun. Because the path that God has for you has the greatest blessings ahead. Five points, and we're all close. A place under the sun. God has a purpose and a plan for us as individuals. Young people, this is for you. 
I was sitting there one time too. I know the struggles that we go through, young people. But God has a purpose and a plan for you as individuals. We are to do our best in the work that lies nearest to us. You know, when we sing, do our best. When we do the Sabbath school, do our best. When we serve the food, stop complaining, do our best. When we cook soup for the soup kitchen, don't complain, do our best. When some, some member of the church has fallen, do our best to reconcile with them. Start forgiving. Do our best in forgiving one another. We have to commit our ways to God. And we have to watch for the indication of His providences in our lives under the sun. A place under the sun. My friends, my appeal to you is what is your place under the sun? And as I said before, I love this quote. Faith to us is a living reality. You know, as we all sing this final hymn, I want you to meditate, not just sing, but meditate on the words that we are singing. And it is appeal, it's an appeal for you and me this morning. And I pray that God will bless us and strengthen us to do our best on this earth while we are still here. Amen. Friends, let us all stand. And as we sing this last hymn, I want us to sing with all our hearts, prayerfully, as one. Let us sing.